If there's one thing gamers love, it's big old swords. You think people liked Final Fantasy VII for its imaginative world and deep characters? Nah, it's that big old sword. You think Doom has been ported to every console, calculator, fridge, and other video game on the planet because of its importance to the FPS genre and gaming as a whole? Nah, it's because he got a big old sword. Eventually, in, in a later one, he got one. And if you're playing through a Souls game without a sword bigger than God, then you're not really playing a Souls game, are you? This is a no magic household, okay? No child of mine is learning pyromancy. And that being said, I don't think it's some great mystery why the likes of the Buster Sword are relegated to fantasy. They're too big, too heavy, and too unwieldy for measly little humans like us to wield. But what if I told you that's only half true? What if I told you that swinging around the massive sword of your dreams might be possible, and maybe even practical. And strangely, if your sword is too heavy, the way to fix it might just be to make it even heavier. This is the physics of fantasy great swords. Richard, you gotta help. I'm going down. I'm going, you gotta help. Also, totally not intentional, but the physics of fantasy does have a pretty nice ring to it. Which I guess means someone else has definitely used it before. But hey, if you got any other items from fantasy or in video games that you want to see me talk about in the future, let me know in the comments. At a glance, a lot of these crazy fantasy swords seem to be the result of blacksmiths who were too worried about whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. But actually, there are a lot of really good reasons to make a big, heavy sword. At its core, a sword is designed to cut stuff by applying a very large force over a very small area, like, say, a sharp edge. As the father of physics, Sir Isaac Newton, figured out, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, if you want to be better at cutting things, you got two options. You can swing your sword faster, or you can make it heavier. A big sword also has the added benefit of simply being longer, which means you can hit your opponent before they can hit you. And that being said, increasing the mass of a blade changes more than just the force it applies. It also increases the momentum of your swing, which is essentially the measure of how hard it is to stop a moving object, and can be found by multiplying something's speed by its mass. Now, having more momentum can be a double-edged sword. Pun definitely intended. I mean, come on. A heavier blade is harder to stop, which can be good if you're swinging into the face of a dragon, it's gonna cut a lot deeper. But it's bad if you're the one trying to move it. We often see characters from fantasy whipping these massive swords around like they're nothing, but in reality it would take a ton of energy to maneuver a sword like this. You can't quickly change directions to get around an enemy's defenses, you kinda just gotta commit to one big swing, leaving your enemy with plenty of time to react. I mean, not really sure what they're going to do about it, but to- ah! There's also the obvious problem that a heavier sword is, well, heavier. It's pretty hard to use a weapon if you can't get it off the ground. Now, a lot of fantasy stories get around this by simply giving characters superhuman strength. But in reality, it might not be so simple. If you wanted to know how strong, say, Cloud from Final Fantasy is, you might be tempted to try and calculate the mass of the Buster Sword and say, wow, Cloud is strong enough to lift 400 pounds or whatever. It's probably not that much. But it turns out there's a pretty big difference between picking up a 400 pound weight in your hands versus one at the end of a really long stick. 
True, they weigh the same, but one is going to require a much greater force to lift. This is due to something called a moment. Think of a moment as the rotational equivalent of a force. So a force makes things move in a line, while a moment makes them move in a circle. And you can calculate the moment by multiplying the force applied to an object by the distance to the pivot point, which in this case would be your hands. If you're holding a long, heavy sword out in front of you, gravity is going to try and pull that blade down, which will create a moment. In order to keep the blade up, you have to not only counteract the downward force, but also the rotational force. So, say we wanted to calculate the moment of Cloud's Buster Sword. According to online sources, the blade of this sword is about one foot wide and five and a half feet long, or about 30 by 167 centimeters, and weighs somewhere in the ballpark of 35 kilograms. Hard to say without knowing exactly what it's made out of, but we'll go with it. The first thing we want to find is the force that gravity is exerting on it, so that we know how much force you need to keep it up. That's relatively simple. Remember, force is equal to mass times acceleration. And here on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. I know Final Fantasy VII doesn't take place on Earth, but let's just pretend it does. So if we multiply 9.8 by 35 kilograms, we get a force of 343 newtons, or 77 pounds. And remember, we're just guessing at the sword's mass, so this could be way off. If you got your own estimate, just grab a calculator and pop it in here. Anyway, now we have the force, but in order to find the moment, we need to know where that force is being applied. And to do that, we need to know the sword's center of mass. Now, obviously, in reality, gravity acts all over an object, but if we find the average effects of all that gravity, we can reduce it to a single force acting at a single point. And that point is called the center of mass. Think of it as the average concentration of matter in an object. So if one end is heavier, the center of mass will be closer to that side. It's also sometimes referred to as the balance point of an object because the forces of gravity on either side are equal. So as long as that point is supported, the object won't tip over. And from this, we find an interesting sort of loophole in sword design. If the mass of the blade is evenly distributed, then the center of mass is going to be about halfway down the length of the blade. So with the Buster Sword, that would be a length of about 0.8 meters, giving us a moment of 274.4 Newton meters. Which admittedly, is a unit that doesn't really mean anything to any of us, but if you want to see how strong someone like Cloud is, try taping a 60 pound weight to the end of a yardstick and swing it around. No, actually on second thought, don't do that, that sounds so dangerous. Now that sounds pretty unwieldy, but if we change the design of the sword a bit and make the tip a little bit thinner and the base a little bit thicker, we could shift that center of mass closer to your hand. And if we were able to say, move the center of mass so that it was 0.4 meters from your hand as opposed to 0.8, it would now have a moment of 137.2 newton meters, meaning the blade would feel half as light while technically weighing the same. Or if you want to keep that whole blade nice and heavy, another way to shift the center of mass is by adding more stuff to the other side. Give that sword a nice big heavy pommel. Doing this, you could, in theory, create a sword that feels lighter, but is actually heavier. You get all the pros of a long, hefty blade and the maneuverability and ease of use of a smaller one. It's a win-win. So then, 
Why isn't history filled with massive sword-wielding barbarians cleaving their enemies in twain with exquisitely balanced swords that pierce the heavens? Well, I mean, aside from maybe struggling to find a material that can support its own weight in a massive blade like that, it wasn't because making or using such a weapon was impossible. Sadly, as with everything in history, this dream was crushed by the cruel reality of money. The larger the blade of a sword, the more resources, time, and money you'd have to spend making it. And as cool as an ultra great sword is, it's probably not necessary. Because swords are kind of a pass-fail tool, right? They either do the thing they're supposed to do, you know, stab, stab, YouTube, don't demonetize me, or they don't. And once you reach the point where you can do that job, anything bigger is kind of overkill. I mean, quite literally, it's literally overkill. You didn't need to, like, turn that dude into two smaller dudes in order to win. Now, you could make the argument that as armor technology improved, you might want a sword that can hit a bit harder to break through it. And that's certainly true, and increasing the mass of the blade would help with that. But there's actually an easier way. In the beginning, I said that there were two ways to increase the cutting power of a sword. Swing it faster, or make it heavier. But there's actually a secret third option. Remember, the whole point of a sword is to apply a big force over a small area. If you want a sword that can cut better, you could increase the force, or you could do what smiths in history actually did and make that area smaller. Use stronger materials that can hold a sharp edge for longer. As you move through time, you'll see the prime choice of weapon material change from the relatively soft but easy to work with bronze to harder iron and finally steel. Turns out, it's a lot easier and cheaper to make a sharper sword instead of a heavier one. Though I think we can all agree, a lot less cool. I mean, come on, look at this thing, dudes. So, there you have it. The amazing ultra great swords of yours and my dreams might not violate the laws of physics, but they do defy an even more powerful force. Economics. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a dragon to kill. Come here, you wicked freak. Oh, no, 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 no. And of course, a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, including Alex, Alakazam, Big Dog Tie for to Win, Captain Kirby, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, Stylish, The Boss Killer 94, Tie Studio, and Mokiubu. 